What is up, guys? The Leafs Combo is back in business, presented by Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario, oakridgeford.com. I'm Norm, along with Mike. The season is about to resume. The Maple Leafs at Nashville on Monday. Michael, the Leafs, clearly with lots of business to attend to. 33 games left to play. They're going to need a bunch of points to get into the playoffs. Uh, good morning, Norm. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to need to probably get to the 95 to 97 point mark to uh, make the playoffs. And the thing is, it was sort of a perfect storm just before the All-Star break where Columbus won six games in a row, Florida won six games in a row, Philadelphia and Carolina are over 500, and the Leafs had lost five of six. So everything in, in, went in one direction. And I, I don't think it's going to be that way in the remaining 33 games. I think the Leafs will sort of return to a level of play unlike that last five of six and play over 500 at least. Mm -hmm. And I think those teams will slow down. So I think this is going to be a very close race, really tight. Every point's going to matter, but um, I think that they can play at that level. It's just a question of whether, you know, they can shore up defensively, play tighter defensively and whether Freddie Anderson plays like Freddie Anderson. Yeah, it remains to be seen how it all plays out, and that's the interesting thing going forward. What Maple Leafs team will we get? I feel like they're in a position now, having slumped before the All-Star break, where they're, they're not going to be able to be masters of their own domain. It was that case when they fired Babcock in late November, and then they went on a rather successful streak, and they looked like they were comfortable, and then they lose five of six. I think the the the, uh, the narrative here is you can't let your guard down, you can't take a week off. You have to continue to win, continue to compile points. And if you do that, then you'll be in a playoff position. And if you, uh, if you slump, if you disappear for a week or two weeks and lose a lot of games in regulation, you're going to pay. So they can't do that. There are so many stats that we can use to slice up a team's performance, the projections, but goals for and against are so important. You look at the top teams in the league, the teams that uh, you believe are legitimately in contention to win a Stanley Cup, a lot of those teams haven't given up more than 140 goals in the season. And they're plus minus differentials uh, in the 30s, high 30s. Uh, looking at Tampa Bay, it's plus 38. You're looking at Boston, plus 34. The Leafs were on pace to get into that realm, and then all of a sudden they lack defensively. This just hits home the point. And the Leafs are a plus 11, by the way, 176 goals for among the top scoring teams in the league, no problem. But they can score all the goals they want. If mm -hmm. they can't limit goals against and confine chances against, this team is going nowhere. And that def defense and being more responsible defensively, being uh, harder on the puck, being tougher to play against. Those are the things that the Leafs are going to have to hone in on and begin to do well at over the next month and a half if they're going to put themselves in a comfortable position to get in the playoffs. Never mind the final week scraping and clawing just to get in so you can get bounced in the first round, Mike. Well, uh, the secret appeared to be under Keefe the ability of this team to keep the puck away from the opposition by possessing the puck in the offensive zone. They, inc they increase their puck, position, puck possession, and when that happens, the other team can't score because they don't have the puck. That seemed to go away over the last couple weeks before uh, the break because they, they seem to not have the puck as much, and when they don't, their defensive flaws show up. So mm -hmm. they gotta get they got to get back to where they were before in terms of holding onto the puck, in terms of creating offensive chances, in terms of eating the clock – off in the offensive zone because when they when they're playing in the defensive zone it's chaotic and they cannot right now they don't have the uh, they don't have the personnel to be able to play a defensive game effectively possession's great and they went on a terrific run there but it's not an indefinite thing you can't just out possess your opponents all the time the Leafs aren't that good they're not exponentially better than the competition. They're marginally better than a lot of teams, maybe not as good marginally as other teams. Despite the amount of talent on this team, collectively, it is still not that much better than the teams that are nipping at its heels. So mm -hmm. that run that it had was terrific. But how do you evolve from that run? You, you need to do more. It's not, it's not like the All-Star game where there's no defense and it's, it's an arcade game. It's fun. That's the way a lot of fans want to see the, the 
NHL and hockey in general go. It's not going to be that way, especially uh, down the stretch towards the playoffs. It's going to get tougher and tougher. And the, the Maple Leafs have to be able to respond with something that is tough and defensive. And uh, really, the onus is on them to get better, Mike. That leads me to a question that I have. Uh, in regards to Kasperi Kapanen, I've read a lot of stuff about him being the chip that the Leafs can use to potentially bring back defensive help, whether it's over uh, a long-term period or a short-term period. It's Kasperi Kapanen's name. He is the guy, the focal point, in terms of a trade out for something back. Can we put anything to rest on this guy right now and say, look, it's not happening? Or is only time going to tell if Kasperi Kapanen is a Maple Leaf past the trade deadline? Can Kasperi Kapanen be traded? Yes. Can he be traded for a rental? Not a chance in hell. And that's, I think that that's been put away if you look at the reports that have come out over the last week, first from Elliot Friedman in his 31 Thoughts column, then from Bob McKenzie on Friday, both, both echoing the same thing. Will the Leafs trade Kapanen or Janssen or Kerfoot? Sure. If it's for a defenseman that has term left on his contract, probably somebody of equal age, which is early to mid-20s, yeah, the Leafs will do that, but they're not going to trade him for a quick fix like a Brendan Dillon or a quick fix like a Georgiev or uh, in goal, it's going to be for somebody with term left. And that's why I don't think that that's going to happen before the deadline because too many things have to match up. That's a, that's a summer deal. That's a draft deal where you trade, you know, for a Shane Gostaspear or uh, a Darnell nurse or somebody of that ilk teams. Those two teams, for example, Edmonton and Philadelphia are in playoff races. They don't want to give up defensemen for forwards, even though they need forwards. So I, I think that there's a possibility that they trade Kapanen, but the idea that they're going to trade him for a guy like Georgiev, who's a backup goaltender for the Leafs, that, that won't fly, and they're not going to trade him for a, for a patchwork fix like a Brendan Dillon, who's an unrestricted free agent. When they have three other unrestricted free agent defensemen uh, in July, they can't add another one. So if the Leafs don't pick it up here in the next three weeks, is it conceivable that Kyle Dubas, if he does anything, it could be minimal? At the trade deadline? It could be the opposite of what people think. I, I know that uh, I think it was Darren Drager reported or, or Pierre Lebrun that Dubas has received calls regarding Muzzin, Barry, and CeCe. So, for example, if the Leafs fall out of the playoffs, wow. could, they sell, could they sell those players? Well, yeah, because th- that's, this is the thing. If you're not in a playoff position and you have three unrestricted free agents and you have traded your first round pick for next year, your third round pick for next year, you would be stupid to not trade these players to get recoup some of your draft picks. Now, I don't think that that's the case. I think they're going to contend for a playoff spot. And if they're within range, they're not going to do that. But they have to plan for that eventuality if they fall behind. If they keep struggling for another two weeks, they're out of the playoff race. They're four points behind the wild card and four points behind Florida in third place. If they fall 10 points behind, they're done. Wow. Your thoughts coming up. This is the Leafs Convo Podcast presented by Oak Ridge Ford. Nathan Jenner here from Oak Ridge Ford with a bang and deal from your favorite Ford dealership. Get a five-year lease on the all-new 2020 Escape SE all-wheel drive for only $188 bi-weekly plus HST with zero down. That's right, zero down. For a limited time, get a 55-inch 4K HD TV with the purchase of any in-stock 2020. Oak Ridge Ford, our reputation gets you here. Our customer service keeps you coming back. For full details, visit oakridgeford.com. Get at me in community for more information about the products we have at Oak Ridge Ford. Three words, go see Norm, could earn you 100 bucks. I added to community a poll like I typically do, several polls uh, per week. Try to keep them short and sweet, and I do appreciate all of your participation in our polls just gauging where your head is at when it comes to the maple brothers will the leafs trade for a defenseman just shy of 100 votes 97 41 percent mike believe that the leafs will trade for a defenseman and Mm -hmm. a good one 26 percent on the other hand think that it's going to be too costly and just from uh, our conversation in this setting i'm beginning to get a sense that the idea of bringing in a top-notch stalwart type defenseman with youth and term on his side uh, between now 
and late February is a bit of a long shot. I think the most likely path in terms of the Leafs making some sort of addition before the deadline is a defenseman with a low salary. I know that, you know, yeah. I'll just I'll just use the example that Carl Koliakovo has talked about on, on TSN numerous times, and that was Michael Delzato. And the reason that that makes sense is because he's a UFA, he's making less than a million dollars, he's experienced, uh, I think I believe he's a right hand shot, yep. which is where they where they they don't need a Delzato for the long haul. But right now, if you're talking about a short term addressing of a situation, you have the right side filled with Dermot, or sorry, with CC with Hall, uh, and uh, it, they you know Delzato could play on the left side, he could play on the right side. He provides somebody who could play instead of a Martin Marinson, who mm-hmm. I don't you know they express their uh, con, uh, their confidence in him, but I just don't think that Marinson is is a is a passable defenseman. <laughs> uh, and I think that they they you know they definitely need somebody who could step in and not be a liability. And unless they want to continue to play Rasmus Sandin, which I think he's he's proved in a short window that he can play in the league, but if they don't want to play, you know, he's probably going to go over ten games yeah. uh, on on Monday against Nashville. But if they want him to play less than forty games, which will be important going forward, then they might have to bring somebody in of a low salary to provide a little depth. Yeah, thirty three percent of the respondents to that poll believe that the Leafs will add some depth. Thanks to Corey P for a nice contribution to community. Longtime fan and supporter of the channel. Thank you so much, Corey. Glad you feel at home. Johnny Moonshine, Captain for Nurse. I think we put that one to bed, but we can still nurse the rumor, Mike. That's what we do around here. Maury Zelkovich in community. Thank you very, very much. Maury, Joe R., Super Coop, Last of Us Clips, John Howard, Lord Longmarch. A lot of thoughts, a lot of hot takes. Guys, we appreciate it very much. Jordan Tanner, the boys are going to come back buzzing after the All-Star break and carry us to the promised land. Nice attitude to have. I don't, you know, when you hear the com- comments of Matthews and Marner and Anderson at the All-Star during the All-Star weekend, they talk a good game. They, they said, well, we know that we're playing bad defensively and we have to you know, basically suck it up and play a better defensive game. Okay, you've acknowledged the problem. Now you have to play the way you're talking. And if they do, then they've done something about it. If they continue to play like they have over the last couple of weeks and clueless defensively at times, then they're just paying lip service to the problem and not doing anything about it. Now, it's a team thing. It's not just the blue line. The blue line is hurting because Riley is out, because Muzzin is out. They're getting Muzzin back. Their defense should be better. But it's a team situation. It's the forwards coming back and not cheating up and not trying to jump into the offensive attack too early. And that's what they have to do. It has to be a team fix defensively and if they don't do that then they're not going to win it's not the all-star game the Leafs aren't playing shinny by themselves out there and at this point they are not in control of their own destiny even though on paper this team looks like it should be one of the top five three in the entire NHL right now there are too many things that have to fall uh, in their favor for them to get to where they want to go unless they get their act together and win a whole shitload of games between now and the trade deadline and put themselves in position to really take a run at this thing. It all remains to be seen, Mike, and that's why we are uh, Leafs fans, Leafs followers, Leafs lovers, Leafs haters. We do it collectively, and we do it here on the Leafs Convo podcast. Last word to you, Mike. After the break, uh, the Leafs play two games on the road. Nashville is struggling uh, they're well out of the playoffs right now in the West. Not saying that that will be an easy game because they're probably just as desperate as Toronto is. Then they play D- Dallas on Wednesday. That's a tough game. They have to at least split these two games on the road, and then they come back against Ottawa on Saturday. Um, they have some a, a lot of uh, home games in February that they have to take advantage of, but they had six of seven at home in January, and they went 500 in those uh, six games. So they have to concentrate on winning on the road and then concentrate on winning at home. As of where we are right now, this is what it is. Michael, thank you very much. Converts OGs, talk to you again at 15 00.